Welcome, fellow nature enthusiasts. Today, we're delving back into the world of wild mushrooms, and our spotlight is on the fascinating pheasant's back, also known as dryad saddle. Let's uncover the secrets of this unique fungus, from its distinct features to its culinary potential. Meet Terioporus squamosus, formerly known as Polyporus squamosus. This mushroom boasts a nearly worldwide distribution and can be spotted year-round in warm, wet weather. Often reported by moral hunters in spring, it thrives on dead hardwood stumps, logs, and even standing dead or dying trees. Its shelf-like growth habit, overlapping layers, and distinctive aroma, often compared to watermelon rind or cucumber, make it quite a remarkable find. The common name pheasant's back originates from the cap's scale pattern, resembling the feathered back of a pheasant. Additionally, the whimsical name Dryad Saddle pays homage to the saddle-shaped appearance of this mushroom, inspiring images of woodland fairies perched upon them. Now, let's talk about the love-hate relationship with Cereoporus squamosus's edibility. Opinions vary, with some praising it as one of the best and others deeming it among the worst. Those who enjoy it emphasize the importance of harvesting very young specimens and employing proper cooking techniques. It's a culinary adventure worth exploring, so give it a try, and you be the judge. Identifying Cereoporus squamosus involves looking for large shelf or bracket mushrooms growing from wood. The cap, ranging from yellowish to brownish, is covered with darker scales, forming a loose concentric pattern. The stem, initially white, darkens with age and features angular pores running down. And don't forget the distinctive aroma, reminiscent of watermelon rind or cucumber. To spot these gems, head into the woods during early spring, especially while hunting morels. Keep an eye on stumps and fallen logs. Unlike the vibrant orange chicken of the woods, Caryoporus squamosus blends in easily. Look out for it in the same habitat as oyster mushrooms, and remember, it can be found practically year-round. When harvesting, go for the smaller, softer caps, around 2 to 3 inches. Keep an eye on signs of age, the cap whitening, and the stem turning black. While it doesn't rot like most soft tissue mushrooms, it can dry out and persist. Harvest by hand or cut at the stem base, ensuring you remove any bugs or debris. Some foragers trim the mushroom in the field, discarding the tough stem and base, keeping the soft outer margin of the cap. When it comes to preparing cereal for squamosis for the table, use fresh clean specimens. Some opt to parboil the mushroom before cooking. Boil large pieces for 5 to 10 minutes then slice and saute with oil or butter. This mushroom requires extra cooking time to bring out its flavor, especially if not parboiled. Add garlic and seasoning for a delightful saute that can be used in soups, sauces, and stir fries. Let's hear from the community. Some say it's not too tasty by itself, but shines as a soup or stew flavoring. Others describe it as delicious, especially when sliced and sauteed in butter and garlic. Share your experiences with Dryad Saddle in the comments below. A quick safety note. While Caryoporus squamosus is not known to be toxic, like all wild mushrooms, it's wise to start with a small amount if you haven't tried it before. Reports suggest it may cause gastric upset if eaten raw or undercooked. In the realm of cultivation, Caryoporus squamosus is cultivated but not on a commercial level. Also. Recent DNA studies have reclassified this mushroom, placing it in the genus Cereoporus. This is why the name changed. Nature's wonders never cease to amaze. As we wrap up our journey into the realm of Cereoporus squamosus, I hope you're inspired to explore the woods and discover the beauty and bounty of wild mushrooms. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more captivating nature insights. Until next time, happy foraging and stay curious.